Should the development of electronic board systems be managed using PLM or ALM? Let's talk about that next. Okay, so let's talk about the development of electronic board systems, printed circuit boards, multi-board systems, all that kind of thing. Now, um, I think traditionally a lot of people use PLM to develop hardware. I mean, it, it, was, it was kind of a natural progression. Um, PLM has been used to manage mechanical hardware, the development of mechanical hardware for a while. Um, and it was a natural extension, kind of extent, you know, push that out to electronic board systems. But it, you know, there is a case to use ALM instead, which is used to develop software. So let's, let's just talk about that and let's look at some context first. And for that context, let's talk about how the artifacts in each of these domains are managed. So to start off with mechanical design, you have mechanical PDM. There's often workgroup data managers that align with each of the CAD systems that you use. And then you have PLM that kind of sits on top of those and they can connect to multiple PDMs. But PLM is what kind of drives and automates the execution of the, of the product development process for mechanical hardware. Okay, and then you have the stuff that you use to manage the development of software. And, and there's the same kind of split. You have software configuration management tools, Git being one of the most popular one of those, that manages the iterations of the code that's developed by different software developers, software engineers. And then you have ALM, which is kind of used to manage the overall development process for approvals, automated testing, and things like that. So then you have these circuit board systems and the tools that you use to manage those. Now, a lot of ECAD tools are a little different in that, especially the, the client server architecture of the more enterprise level tools, there's a central database that the software client is connected to. And that is a way to manage the iterations and versions of the designs of multi-board systems. So let's stop there for a minute and just catch up. So it's, it's interesting for each of these domains, there are different kind of data management tools and they're different, right? Software has their own thing with good Git tools, software configuration management, mechanical PDM is different and then electronics has its own thing. So the question becomes, you know, and there's an established thing for product development, the process side of things with PLM for mechanical hardware Software has ALM, so, but there hasn't traditionally been something for electronics, and that's where we get into which is the best fit. So let's talk about that. So I think when we think about, you know, which of these tools are best to manage the process for the development of board systems, it makes sense to ask questions about, okay, what are the, an effect is, what are the issues that affect the development of electronic board systems? So for example, with software, the key crucial point is, will that software run on the target electronics hardware? Will it drive the right logic? But number one, will it just run on it? And alternatively, when you look at the integration point with mechanical hardware, the enclosure in this case, you're asking questions around, well, is it going to fit, number one, but just as importantly, is the enclosure going to cause shorts on the board? So there are, there are legitimate issues on both sides here. So one of the things that I like to use to figure out what is a better fit here is what processes do you put in place to resolve those issues, those challenges? Is, it, is the software going to run on the target electronics? How do you make sure that uh, the board fits into the enclosure, doesn't have shorts? From a process perspective, it gets really interesting because there have been emerging practices and processes around software running on a target electronic hardware. And I'm talking about X in the loop processes. So starting off with model in the loop where you have a software model connected to a simulation of everything else. Uh, it proceeds to software in the loop, hardware in the loop. This is where you actually have uh, it running on electronics 
sometimes it's an emulator. Sometimes uh, it is a prototype board that is then connected to all the actuated components the software should control. So that is, I mean, compare that to, okay, let's make sure it fits in the board, prototype and test, basically. Let's make sure you don't have shorts. Again, prototype and test, basically. Maybe some simulation involved in there, um, or maybe it's just fitting the model, one model and another model. <clears throat> it can be that simple. So what's interesting, when I thought about this, the whole X in the loop process side of things is much more complex. It's phased even. And that, to me, speaks that you need more process rigor between software and electronic hardware than electronic hardware and mechanical enclosures. So <clears throat> there's, a, there's a legitimate reason to think that, hey, maybe ALM is a, is a better fit to manage and solve those process problems than PLM. So, of course, this is, this is a subject that's up for debate. Let's have a good conversation about it. I'm really to listen to everybody else's opinion on this, but just a thought in the, the problems that companies are encountering and the acuity of those problems. A lot of companies are struggling with, okay, let's make sure that the software does what we expect it to do. <clears throat> and it might be that ALM is a better solution here. So that's it. Take care. Talk soon.